Uh, let me start with this email here, which comes from Peter Maritzburg. It says, does Mr. Manuel intend that the government creates all these jobs? There will then be civil servants' jobs paid by the state. Now, how will that wage bill be, be covered, given that the tax-paying base is so small relative to the population? Note that the education department in Peter Maritzburg is sent interns to learn the ropes. They arrive full of enthusiasm, which endures for three months, after which they fall into the prevailing attitude of doing as little as possible. I'm not sure which specific office or department gets interns, but the issue deserves attention. Kathleen McDrummond. Minister, do you want to respond to this email for me, please? Let me do, because there are a number of questions there, Kalani. Yeah. One of them is interns, and uh, uh, again, in departments that I've looked after, uh, we've always had interns, but interns work if you have a number that's manageable, uh, where there's over uh, sight of their activities, where they're encouraged, and uh, hopefully after about a year, those interns can either be absorbed into that department or uh, the, if they're well-trained, they'd be available for, for employment elsewhere. Um, we've, we've followed uh, interns uh, everywhere in the Treasury, in the National Planning Commission, in Stats, in SARS, uh, watched this thing very carefully, and uh, I, I haven't had the same experience. I can well imagine that if you take a few thousand people in, uh, and, and nobody to supervise their activities or train them, that would be a disaster for the department and its wage bill on the one hand and for the interns on the other. So the limitation is always uh, the amount of, of supervision that you can have on interns, failing which the system will collapse. Um, in respect of government creating jobs, the only jobs that we're speaking of in government are actually the Community Works Program uh, and Expanded Public Works Program type jobs. I think we are saying to business in South Africa, we are saying to trade unions in South Africa, that uh, we need to approach these issues differently. There is a chapter in the report that deals with an integrated uh, uh, rural uh, economy mm -hmm. that actually sets out how in the short term we will be able to stimulate an additional one million jobs uh, in, in, in the rural economy parts of it uh, uh, as a result of uh, irrigation infrastructure, but parts of it also because we link small and emerging farmers with supply chains for supermarkets and so on. It's a very detailed proposal, uh, and it demonstrates that it can work, but it will require the involvement of the uh, organized agriculture coming to the party, provincial agriculture departments and so on, uh, providing technical and other skills. If we don't do these things, then land uh, redistribution, land restitution won't work because people are placed on the land without any skills, any support systems, and uh, set up for failure. These are the kinds of issues we need to turn around. All right, Minister, let's take a couple of calls here, uh, and, and we'll get responses in a short while, starting with Pat in Freiburg. Hello, Pat. Good morning, Polani. My Hi. question is... Uh, let me start this way. The biggest factor uh, for changing the conditions in the public sector seems to be the human factor. So if we invest in human beings and uh, we make sure that there is free education at least up to tertiary level, I think that we will be able to achieve a lot if we could do that. So my question is, why is it so difficult to implement this policy? Of free education. All right, yes. Pat and Feierbeck, thank you. Okay. The minister will respond in a minute. Uh, let's go to Lungile in Colesburg. Hello, Lungile. Hello, Colani. Morning, Minister. Hi. Uh, I just want to say we are very impressed about this plan as business people in these rural towns. One very critical issue is the exploratory fracking, Minister. Uh, we are sitting in course, but very near those areas where this is going to take place. And as business people, we have uh, resolved to, to donate land to government free of charge to come and build a university in this area so that we can respond to five key priorities of government and all these other ambitious issues which are in the plan. Where do we start, Minister, doing that? That's my question. All right. Uh, Lungile, the minister will respond to you again in a minute. I really need to take as many people as possible. Hassan in Johannesburg, good morning. Good morning. Hi. Uh, my question is to the minister, is this a state plan or a national development plan? And then if it is a national development plan, what are we doing about the power of corporations today? Because if we don't deal with these issues now, 
in 30 years' time, the corporations will just be more and more stronger. I mean, uh, the minister alluded to Occupy Wall Street, etc. I really think that if, if we don't discuss these issues today, because the decisions we make now about whether mining takes place, does not take place, how the environment looked after, happens now, which will live with us for a generation. So related to that, I, I find that... Uh, uh, we don't discuss much the power of corporations. And then you find one of the senior uh, persons on this committee engaging very actively, trying to, if you like, limit national debate around nationalization. I'm talking about Bobby Gottsell. So I really think we need to have a lot more discussions, quite robustly, whether Greece should have a referendum or not. Why is it that the economy, in that sense, where private sector is involved, seem to be almost a private domain? We don't discuss it publicly okay. sufficiently enough. Oh, yeah. Let me take the last call then, get the minister to respond. Andrew is in Cape Town. Good morning, Andrew. It's um, great to hear the initiatives at senior level and the willingness at senior level uh, to implement these programs. I can tell you that I've been engaged with government agencies. I have um, systems for remediation of water and production of power, and I've basically, after four years, got absolutely nowhere in terms of raising funds, in terms of you know, getting getting systems off the ground. And uh, in my recent engagement with the uh, Department of Science and Technology, I'm at the point now where I'm thinking I might even have to go to the courts to protect my intellectual property. Yeah. So it just seems there's great initiative and great uh, impetus at very senior levels, but when it gets rolled out, I mean, it's just, uh, okay. it goes nowhere. All right, Andrew in Cape Town, thank you. Minister, let me read one or two more SMSs then to, to, uh, so that you can respond to as well. Somebody says, can the minister explain this? How does uh, easy firing of a worker create jobs? That's Joe in Peter Moritzburg. Another one says, relax the draconian labor laws, restrict union interference, and want job opportunities open like the flowers in springtime. That's Keith in Port Elizabeth. Another one uh, says, well done, Mr. Manuel. Heartily support proposals. That's Anne. Uh, an SMS not signed says, says, the public protector needs to probe an unexplained amount ranging around 20 to 50,000 rand awards that awarded to non-performing school principals three years back. Uh, there's another one. China grew by exploiting and colonizing neighbors like Tibet and Burma. India on cheap labor. Which one will they copy? Lindo. Lots of these SMSs, Minister. Just please uh, broadly respond to the SMSs and then perhaps specific uh, questions that came through on the line. But, uh, you know, we've got uh, 60% of, of school education is actually uh, done at no fee schools now. There is a free tertiary education for deserving, academically and uh, economically deserving students. These are uh, reinforced in the, in the proposals here, um, and, and that must be taken up. I think that the idea that, that uh, we will be able to accommodate people who are a uh, uh, in, a, in an economically fine position and be uh, not working uh, just under the guise of, of free education uh, in higher and tertiary education uh, is not acceptable. Uh, it has to be deserving, and I think that we are entirely in line with the proposals of the Ministry of Higher Education in a green paper released just recently. Elf, thanks for embracing it. The issues are large in implementation. I think we are saying don't wait for a big man uh, in government. We need to involve communities in implementation, and uh, education is going to be one of the drivers of that. The big challenge for us is, of course, the teaching of maths and science because uh, the jobs that ALF refers to that are available um, are, tend to have quantitative skills relating to maths and science. We teach too little of that in our schools. And I think that, that if you draw a distinction between countries that are now advancing and countries that aren't, that is the big determinant. And so getting maths and science teachers into schools uh, is fundamentally important. The uh, National uh, Planning Commission proposes that we recruit uh, teachers from other English-speaking countries who have those skills to ensure that we can multiply on maths and science teaching as a prerequisite for the success of other things we must do. Lungile in Colesburg, you know, we, I want to make a point that, that the, the Planning Commission is not of one mind about the fracking. But we're saying if we have these enormous reserves, then on an exploratory basis, let's test them. If we can't find them, we can reduce the carbon footprint and meet the target that President Zuma committed to. Uh, in Copenhagen uh, uh, two years ago. Um, we can also
also then defer the decisions on, on uh, other issues like nuclear, and we can reduce the dependence on coal for the production of energy. But we need to be careful because there are stories, good and bad, relating to fracking elsewhere in the world. And as a group, the, national, the members of the National Planning Commission have probably read more about fracking, uh, uh, good and bad, from a range of sources than anybody else, I would imagine, any other small group. Um, and so it's, it's, it's on a, an exploratory basis, and we must watch, because in the Karoo, uh, we, we must uh, maintain the the purity of our aquifers, because they are few and far between. We need to watch those issues very carefully. Mm -hmm. On the university, there is a proposal that we should advance the university in the Northern Cape. I will leave it to uh, Minister Bladen Zimande and uh, Premier uh, Hazel Jenkins to be able to determine where it will be. Mm -hmm. But given the big takeoff in the Northern Cape, you've got... Uh, uh, astrophysics required in areas uh, uh, around where where the SKA and Mirkat will be built. Perhaps uh, we need uh, some some uh, geology and geomorphology and other mineralogy uh, closer to Colesburg. So I will draw the attention of my colleagues to your proposal, Lungile. Hassan, um, you know, you've singled out Bobby Godsell, but I think uh, a number of us, I would include myself uh, in here, We've indicated that nationalization of the mines won't work. It won't work because um, even if the state uh, acquired them free, we would need uh, enormous sums to invest to keep the mines uh, going. Every shaft uh, drilled uh, is immensely expensive. And uh, when we look at all of the demands on that the plan would generate over the next period, it's unlikely to be that nationalization would provide it for us. Uh, but leave that aside. I think we are saying that it's an all-in effort. South African corporations need to be involved in this process, uh, and everybody needs to put shoulder to the wheel, failing which we won't be able to realize uh, the kind of uh, 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 potential that South Africa is capable of. Mm. Andrew, I don't know what your technical innovation is, but uh, uh, there normally is uh, that vast gap between what people say at top level and implementation, but uh, forward the details and we will try and watch it. Joe's question about easy firing. Look, if I were an employer and I have to take somebody who I've not tested uh, through, through a, a uh, uh, I forget what you call this uh, period. Uh, what? Are you probation aging? period. Yes, probation period. Uh, and mm. uh, 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 I'm going to be stuck with a person for life. I would be unlikely to employ the person. Mm. So we're saying easy firing for, for misconduct. And you shouldn't have to employ people who don't know how to behave, who refuse, who refuse to work. Uh, you shouldn't have to employ people like that in the mm. system. Uh, and this is the only proposal being made. 